Hey everyone, it's Scott from startmedia.com. Today I'm going to be going over the EU Image Optimizer plugin, how to install it, and I'm going to walk you through the general settings of the plugin. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and install the plugin. You're going to go to Add, Add New, then you're going to search for EU Image. It's going to be the first option. If you're using the paid version, you'll have to download the cloud version, but the free version is right here and works just great. Great. When you first install it, it's going to prompt you to use um, to track telemetry data. It'll give you 500 free image credits, which will use the cloud compression, which was going to, which would be a better compression. However, since this is a tutorial, I'm going to click Do Not Allow. From now, we're going to go to the settings window. So you can give you really good compression ratios depending on the types of images, and it can give you really high compression on its paid version. So currently it recommends that you get the premium version, of course. And when you look at the settings, you have quite a few tabs and we're gonna go ahead and go through them all. Number one is the optimization API key. This is for the premium version. If you have one, you can put it here. If you're using the free version like I am, skip it. After that, we have remove metadata. So metadata is anything that is, as it says, not pixel data. This is copyright data. This is color profiles, comments, maybe geolocation information, additional items such as this. However, this data from an SEO standpoint and more importantly from a user experience standpoint does not matter. Uh, nobody cares what the EXI, EXI update is. They will never see it, and Googlebot doesn't care. However, they do add a significant amount of data to your images that removing them is a must. If you're on a photography website, you may be hesitant of doing this, but I highly recommend you do it because it's a great way of reducing your page weight without impacting the total amount of, well, without impacting the quality of your images, to be quite frank. As we can see, we have various compression levels for various types of content. So the JPEG optimization level, it says it's pixel perfect. This is a lossless compression. It will remove the metadata. It will remove extra items, but this will not impact the image quality. You will not see a visual difference between the uncompressed version in the compressed version of this. So Pixel Perfect is great right where you will want to be out of the box. If you're paying for the premium version, you could do Pixel Perfect Plus and you could do Premium Plus and Premium. These would offer a better compression ratio, but they will impact the image quality. The good healthy medium if you're using the paid version is the premium. It will have a slight image quality reduction, but to notice it, you would normally have to zoom really close in on your images. And nobody's going to do that in any sense of the word. No one's just going to do it. Now, one interesting bit of information is the PNG optimization level on the free version does come with premium, which is interesting. It is the only one that offers premium compression for free. What that means for you though, is you can expect some quality loss, but it shouldn't be a noticeable impact on image quality. And as always, you should be backing up your images before running through them with an image compress compressor. There's GIF optimization, which is basically pixel perfect or no compression because most image compression of GIFs is just to suggest converting it to an MP4. GIF is not an efficient format, but sometimes it's the only option you have. But I highly recommend it. if you have a GIF and you're actively making use of them, just go ahead and convert them to MP4s, remove the video player, and it will work better than a GIF would. You'll see better render performance, you'll see smaller page size, and it just makes everybody happier. PDF optimization level is not included, but it will go ahead and compress PDFs, only if you pay for it though. 
If you use the PID version, it can also automatically back up the original images, but we just have to use a backup plugin for the free version. So ExactDN, I'm going to touch on very lightly. This only works if you have a subscription and you entered that API key right here, but it's basically comparable to the WordPress.com CDN, which is included in Jetpack, where it will resize images, it will compress them, serve them as WebP. This is basically the exact same thing. They claim it's smarter. I can't say yes or no one way or another, but take their word for it. Um, that's all I can really say about it. You're not paying for it in this video. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip it. But if you were, you would go ahead and enable this option. I would disable this option to include fonts, CSS, and JS files. Instead, make use of your own CDN, such as Cloudflare. I would enable premium compression, and I would not use their lazy load feature. Instead, I recommend using something like Rocket Lazy Load from WordPress Rocket. It would just be a much better lazy load technology than theirs. Under the advanced options, so let's talk about JPEG quality level. WordPress by default compresses JPEGs, albeit very minimally. On a scale from 1 to 100, WordPress by default uses a quality level of 82. As you go lower, so let's say you use a 40, the image size would get much smaller, but the quality would get much worse. Now, JPEG quality level does not apply to the original full-sized upload in WordPress. It only applies to thumbnails that are generated from your theme and plugins. So it's interesting. I would honestly just leave this at the default of 82. It's been tested a lot. It used to be 90. By reducing it to 82, they saw a good compromise of minimal quality loss with a lot smaller images. I wish WordPress did it by default for PNGs as well, but we can't be too greedy here, can we? Parallel optimization. Basically, all this does is when an image is uploaded to the server, and all those new thumbnails are being generated, you can have you image optimizer compress them all simultaneously. The advantage to this is that the task gets done much faster, but the downside is, is it uses a lot more of your CPU on that image upload. And if you find yourself using a front-end image uploader, maybe you're on a B, Buddy B Press or BB Press website, you'll probably want to enable this or you'll want to skip this totally and instead use scheduled optimization. The reason for that is, is if they're uploading fairly large images and your server is either really slow or is being hammered at that moment, it can affect their experience because their images will take forever to upload. And then there's the schedule optimization, which does as it says, it will schedule a cron job task to go through and compress images from your theme, BB, buddy press, BB press, et cetera, et cetera. And it will run every hour. Now keep in mind, this is if you're using WordPress cron. If you have a real cron job, then the reliability of this goes ways up. Because by default, WordPress cron only runs if the site has been visited as this plugin mentions here. So just use a regular WordPress cron. Uh, don't use regular WordPress cron and instead replace it with a cron job. In addition to the scheduled optimization, you can click include media folders, which I highly recommend if you're using the scheduled optimization. Because what this will do is it will scan all the images in the first two media libraries folders. And the reason you might be wondering why that's enabled is because scheduled optimization by default doesn't do that unless you specify them in the folders to optimize. The benefit of doing this is the first month, and let's say that you were on the 31st and somebody uploaded an image at 1150 PM on the 31st, and then the first rolls around, and it'll go through and click and optimize that image from the previous month and the current month if more images have been uploaded since the last time it was run. Just go ahead and enable this and this option. Folders to optimize. If you have a plugin or a theme that creates thumbnails in their own folder, you want to go ahead and include these here. This way you can go ahead and compress those images even if they're not normal paths. 
Now, you Image Optimizer's team has done a really good job of adding support for most common plugins, um, various galleries, various, um, all kinds of strange plugins out there have added native support. BuddyPress and BBPress are other ones. And this is gonna be for the plugins that it doesn't support. So they're gonna be smaller, one-timey plugins. But I would just add those here, but you have to declare the full path. So as I mentioned, it's home. Normally it's your account name if you're on a cPanel, the public HTML, your folder if you're in one, WP content, uploads, da da da. Folders to ignore. I've never had a reason to ignore a folder unless I needed a complete raw image and not like raw in the photography sense, but I'm in a 100% unoptimized version of the image. Which, if you're a photographer, this may be a useful functionality for you if you use your server as another means of backing up your images. You could go ahead and exclude the folder that are being uploaded here to prevent them from being optimized and that way they're pixel perfect. But don't go ahead and add every image folder in here because then you're just wasting your time. Great, now here comes the resize feature. Now, I'm gonna speak in all honesty from here. I think that these resize features are incredibly useless and that they should only be used by those who don't take good care of the images they're uploading. So, every image that I upload to my website, I at least try to get it in 1920 by 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080. That way, it's a full screen, like this screen here, and then my theme or the plugins or the widgets will resize the images dynamically using the WordPress thumbnails. That's just how it should be. And that, that sounds like a strange concept, but here, here's the issue. All this does is share, shave off the amount of storage that's gonna be used. So if you're uploading 4K images, but you never need an image that's larger than 1920 by 1080, you're just, you're frankly just wasting space. And the reason I upload 1920 by 1080 for most of my images is that way if I do wanna use it as a full screen image, I can. And if it's for gonna be for a 4K resolution screen, it's gonna look terrible anyways, because who's browsing in 4K? Me soon enough, I hope. But don't make use of this feature if you can. Just take good care of your images. Don't upload ridiculous sized ones in the first place. And this is another important part. When you disable resizes, you're saving space on the server. But what you're also doing is you're shooting yourself in the foot from a performance standpoint. If your theme it generates a thumbnail size, let's say 500 by 500 pixels, and it's for your blog archive, your blog page, and then it'll list out all your posts with a little thumbnail on the side. If you disable that like you can under here, what's gonna happen is now it's gonna fall back and most themes hopefully declare one of the native thumbnail sizes, so maybe like medium or large or thumbnail. But if it's not a good theme, it may just go ahead and resort to the original upload image. So if you upload 1920 by 1080, the theme may start showing 19 by, 1920 by 1080 images in a 500 by 500 square. And forget about it, if it looks distorted, it's gonna be ridiculously huge and add so many extra bytes to your page that it's just not necessary. So I recommend not disabling the creation of images unless you know for certain that it's not being used. And if it's not being used, why is it being declared in the first place? If you've got a plugin that uses it, see if the plugin has an option to disable it or just disable it from here. But don't sacrifice your performance because you wanted to get an image. Don't sacrifice performance so you could save a few kilobytes of space on your server. Server space is cheap. I bought a, well, how many terabytes is this? I bought a three terabyte drive for less than a hundred bucks. Storage is cheap. Now SSDs are more expensive, but that's a different story. Use something like AWS, put it on a cloud storage, something else. Now let's move to the convert. So the, let's go into the first rule of how images should be uploaded on the internet. Number one, PNGs are good in two scenarios. Number one, you need transparency. 
The image has to have a transparent background, you have to use PNG. Or number two, it's virtually all text, then you wanna go ahead and use PNG because you get sharper edges. Now, I know the SVG crowd and all the other crowds out there are gonna be like, oh, you should use blah, 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 blah. No. At the end of the day, there's the three major image formats and we shouldn't even talk about GIF because it's terrible. But you know, JPEG, PNG, GIF. JPEG should almost always be your go-to image because it's super small with minimal quality loss. So what you image optimizer tries to do is try to remedy, remedy that situation. So conversion is only available for images in the media library by default. The reason for this is you image optimizer tries to go through to your post and update the URLs if you have it to set to convert images. If this is a brand new site, get into the habit of uploading of converting your PNGs to JPEGs before uploading. But if you don't, set this up to handle it for you. So I would go ahead and say delete the original image after a successful conversion. Because if this is a brand new site, don't do this for your existing site, and especially don't do it if you have not taken a backup. If your images go away, it is not my fault. But assuming this is a brand new website, and you've already got your logos uploaded, and you're looking to compress all those fancy new PNGs to JPEGs, enable this. Hide the conversion links as well. You don't want anyone else messing with this setting. Now, don't ever convert JPEGs to PNGs because it's utterly a waste. But PNG to JPEGs should be converted. And then under here, you see the JPEG background color. Now, what you could do is if you had, say, a logo and you had a white header, you could convert it to JPEG and have a white background that it's on. However, anytime you change that background color, now your text is gonna be a white background on there. So I just recommend leaving the background color blank. Um, the ultimate reason for that is you want it to skip PNGs that have transparent backgrounds. So enable this, but don't touch this. GIF to PNG. But they're completely right. PNG is better than GIF, but you wanna know it's better than both. MP4, just try it. It's a little bit more work, but it's a lot better for you in the long run. So I'm not even gonna bother clicking it because I would never upload a GIF in the first place unless it was for a meme. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to the WebP section. So WebP images are automatically served from ExactDN, which we don't have. But if we did, this would take care of that for us. Wait, hold on, this is enabled for some reason. Ah, uh, here we go. Now it's the old school WebP. All right. So, you image optimizer can convert JPEGs and PNGs to WebP, which is great. And the best part is, is the original images are never deleted. Um, downside, you should expect now twice as many images on your server. This is why I'm more of a fan of using something like Cloudflare or a Jetpack CDN to handle WebP conversion. Because what happens is you're doubling the amount of space that your image is taking up, and you're going to run into a lot of problems. For instance, with Force WebP, WebP images will be generated and saved for all images, regardless of their size. This I'm not a fan of. This is pretty dumb. But JS WebP rewriting. Use this if the Apache rewrite rules do not work or if your images are served from a CDN. So unless you have the cache enabler plugin, which I haven't made a video for, you need some, you need a caching plugin that will support a separate cache file generated specifically for browsers that support WebP. If you use this and the browser doesn't support WebP, they're not going to have images shown to them. And that's why I'm not a fan of this plugin's implementation notably. Ideally, you would want it to be sent without modifying the HTML. So the PNGs and the JPEGs would show the same in the front end, but it would be served as WebP. And if I had an example, let me see if I can find one. I don't have any images on here, but if I did, the point would be the same. You would want it to show the same, but then it, 
when it hits the server, the server takes the logic and says, okay, this user agent, then it checks it against the list and it's like, oh, hey, this supports WebP. You go ahead and set WebP. Don't enable this functionality unless you have a plugin that specifically supports WebP caching. Even then, eh. So the overrise is basically just their documentation on how to change a bunch of things using defines and WordPress configs, filters, things of that nature. Doesn't matter. Support, you can go ahead and contact them for support. And this is also a bunch of debugging information. You're gonna need to go ahead and give this to the plugin developer whenever you're wanting to request support because believe it or not, this long list of stuff does help, especially if we're noticing a consistent issue. As somebody who has written a plugin, oh, plugins, and worked on themes, the more information I have about your specific setup, the better. So for instance, if somebody approaches the U image optimizer developer and says, hmm, my GIFs aren't being compressed. And right here it says permissions. Okay, it has the correct permissions for the file and it says it's okay. So we know that this is not a permission issue. It's already been ruled out. And that just cuts down on the back and forth chatter that we'll inevitably have to do with trying to diagnose your issue. And there's just a lot of interesting stuff here. And finally, there's the contribute, which is basically allow them to track you. You'll get cookies, but they'll get telemetry data. Telemetry data is cool, um, does help. It's truly just a user choice if they want to share the data or not. But um, the last thing in new image optimizer is to bulk compress your images. So after you made all your changes, and you don't have the scheduled optimization enabled, you can go into the media library. Let me just turn this off to show you. Scheduled optimization, you go medium, bulk optimize. It's gonna show this really cool window. You're gonna just go ahead and say, oh, you don't have any images yet. And to, quick, to quickly go over this, it says there's been one image that's been optimized. That's great. So this image was optimized, it saved 0.2%. And that was the screenshot. And it was PNG. Probably could have been JPEG, but that's not the point. But we can force it to re-optimize images. This is good if you've gone ahead and you changed your image optimizer settings. Go ahead and click this, run it through. Now, another quick tip, if you're on a host like HostGator, increase the pause between images. This is gonna drive you crazy, but let it run overnight if you have a lot of images and set it to even a pause of one second. It'll give the CPU time to breathe. And what happens is on a lot of those hosts, if the process runs for X amount of time, then you're gonna get flagged. So typically it's like 30 seconds or some jazz like that. So you can set anywhere from between one and five seconds and that should really reduce your CPU usage. Now, when you have a lot of images, it will give you an estimated time. So if it's sitting eight hours, just go ahead and take a nap, go eat dinner, because it's really going to take you that long. <laughs> but outside of that, you image optimizer, great plugin. I use it frequently every day. It's my preferred free image optimization plugin. If you're on SiteGround, the SiteGround plug optimizer has a similar functionality in it. It's not nearly as effective as use, and it's not as quick, but they both will get the job done. If you have any questions about UMH Optimizer, you can feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll try to address them. Otherwise, you can check out my website, contact me there. And if you need, just go ahead and contact the developer with any of your questions. Thank you very much for watching.